singer and the piano player of the hour, Mr. Nat King Cole, introducing Viewpoint, the program of personality to politicians and perspectives. And we certainly have perspective, and we got a couple of great personalities this morning. Nice to leave about the politicians. Well, they're busy. They're down in Springfield because at they the of forty back. at the tune of forty big ones a day. That, yeah, that's right. Now, at my work, if I don't get my work finished, I just stay you until stay it's done. To get it I done. bet you do too, don't you, people? Now, sure, that's not kind them. of the way it works. But now they're down there, costing your the nickel. taxpayers forty forty grand a day uh, for what, and they won't get anything done. Oh well. A point kudos. Let's, let's get right to business. You have a couple of kudos or a kudos. Yeah, I do. Turn that over. That's your department today. The, uh, this would be Mrs. Busby on my right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the local Humane Association has taken it upon themselves to organize a pet cemetery out there. And I think that's really nice because there are many people who have a pet that they're really fond of, you know? And no way uh, to have a little service for it. And now this will allow them that. And I think that's a good service. I'll bet people will take advantage of that. Yeah, pretty neat, uh, kind of unique in the community. I know uh, how you love your dog, Bill. You'd probably take advantage of that. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> She's saying that facetiously because our dog is Jean's dog, and the dog pays good of attention to me. So. <laughs> but my dog likes Bill best. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> well, it's kind of con it's kind yeah. of involved. <laughs> well, doggies, uh, that brings us into. Um, uh, all kids love dogs. Yeah. And um, do you have anything about kids today that you want to start with? Oh, but this uh, is so this funny. This up. is kids. We were saying just before we went on about when you get some of these things around Thanksgiving where the kindergartners have written the recipe for fixing a turkey <clears throat> and so forth, they're always absolutely a hoot. Um, this is, a, is little people writing about the ocean. Um, if you are surrounded by ocean you are an island. If you don't have an ocean all around you, you are incontinent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Getting there. <laughs> sharks, sharks are ugly and mean and have big teeth just like Emily Richardson. She's not my friend anymore. <laughs> One of the oh, gems, one are, of the gems of uh, internet that comes through periodically, oh kind of make oh. your day. Um, well, we've got to, we've got a lot to talk about today, and uh, Mr. Cece gave me this uh, pamphlet. It's almost like a Sears and Roebuck catalog, for goodness sake. Sears and Roebuck, <laughs> you remember Sears and Roebuck, don't you? Sure. sure. Well, you're just on the bubble there. You <laughs> at one time, it had a prominent place in all the outhouses in the county. <laughs> you know, so. so <laughs> Uh, but I knew both of your parents, and they didn't have outhouses. <laughs> yes, right. Oh, uh, yeah, speaking of parents, uh, we all remember uh, Chris's father with great fondness, uh, left us from way, way too young. And so we're honored to have Chris back with us. Introduce these guests for us, will you, please? Jan Schacht mm -hmm. is the director of the local YMCA, and with her is Chris Cece. And Chris is the director of sports and aquatic activities. So we have two of the high end of the food chain people <laughs> with us today. That's quite an honor. And they're busy as cranberry merchants because summer has definitely arrived. And we've kind of been emphasizing for the last couple weeks uh, things for people to do uh, for kids in the summer. Um, it seems that a common war cry from children today about oh, maybe 30, 45 minutes after school is out, and they're over the excitement of that, they start with the, I'm bored. <laughs> and there are... We're sitting in front of the boob tube. Myriad things for kids to do. And uh, you certainly offer a good lineup of things. And uh, there, there are lots of sports and water activities. Uh, the swimming is getting underway, Chris, is that right? That is correct. Uh, our swim lessons started this Monday uh, and go for 
three sessions, each session going two weeks. Uh, so that will go all the way through the end of July. So plenty of time to sign up for swim lessons and to get the kids out, learning that great life skill. Now, well, people will say, important. where are they taking them to swim? Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let's cover that, Chris. Uh, sure. Uh, we have our swim lessons out at the Elks Country Club. Uh, it is, uh, the swim lessons are open to the public. Uh, we offer our swim lessons for any children as young as six months all the way up to 12 years. Obviously, the six months uh, are with a parent, oh, thank you. Uh, but that goes all the way up to 12 years. But we also, um, if you're over 12 or an adult and you still want to learn how to swim, we open it up to private lessons as well. So, Well, you're up to me now. I am over 12 <laughs> and an adult. But, you know, that business of having it begin with six-month-olds, um, I'm afraid of water is the reason, at which nobody can understand since I'm from Minnesota, but it's true. <coughs> and um, that business of putting six-month-olds in the water has always scared me absolutely to death. And my kids were born swimming. If they could have, they'd have jumped off a dock when they were six months old, I know. Right. Uh, but uh, it's always been kind of frightening to me. How do you go about that? When Usually when they're that young, and like I said, when they're that young, they're with a parent, so they're, uh, they're getting acclimated to the water, and we have an instructor right there with them too, so really two adults uh, for each very small child, and uh, they're somebody's constantly holding on to them but as they're getting used to the water the kids just feel more at home and start to do more and more in fact we have a little two-year-old out there uh, this year that was out there last year as a one-year-old and he's out there floating around by himself sometimes uh, swimming between two people uh, people yeah between his parent and our instructor mm -hmm. and you, you think how are they able to do that at two years old and but they uh, I think what it is when you're that young <laughs> You're you're just you're fearless, and you you just uh, you just want to try to do the best you can. It's uh, sometimes we have more trouble with the adults who kind of know more of the uh, the fears of water and things like that. But now the kids uh, they trust our instructors, and we have very good instructors this year. And uh, that's great. Th it's uh, it, it's just a great experience for them. And oh, it is. Chris, it I'd really like to ask is. about your instructors. Where do we get their instructors? Young, young college kids, young high school youngsters who, who have uh, water safety uh, certifi certification? Right. Or? All of our instructors uh, are either uh, 16, probably I'd say the age range is 16 through 22, 23 year uh -huh. olds, so high school and college kids. They all have to be uh, first aid, CPR, uh, lifeguard. Yeah. Um, and swim instructor certified mm -hmm. uh, so they go through those classes and those have to be renewed depending on CPRs every two years and lifeguards every three years so uh, they're all certified and they go through that those classes and uh, and they're just they're really good with the kids too uh, and they the little kids see them as a uh, um, kind of great role model in the water and sure. and, and they make it fun too they uh, in addition to getting some good swim lessons, they they do some fun games too. So it's not like they're the kids are going into work; they're they're learning something great, but also having a good time as well. Well, you know, it. I think it doesn't so much matter what you do; it's how it's presented. And exactly, if they're having a good time and learning to swim, that is so fortunate. You you just never know. You know, you may not want to be uh, Mark Spitz or something, but. <clears throat> you could go out fishing and the boat would tip over and it would be a handy thing to know how to swim in that event you know exactly well it's interesting we don't we we think here locally of our ymca and in the metropolitan areas larger areas uh oftentimes you'll find they have their uh, their own building standing and in that building will be the swimming pool uh so we don't th necessarily acquaint swimming well, we're going to go so it's great to know that we have this offering and this program. It's nice you can uh, can pair up with the Elks and they let us use that facility out there uh, because that is a, a neat facility. And in the winter time, uh, we've got this great facility at Lincoln College, and a lot of people uh, uh, go out there and pay a very modest fee 
just for uh, just for swimming, just kind of keep in shape. Uh, Jan, uh, I was just thinking, I kind of did a little research on the uh, YMCA. It's over 160 years old. Did yes, you know it started yes. in London, England, my dear? Yes. You know, true. you won't believe this, but I did know that part. <laughs> she astonishes me. She I just astonish a, myself. <laughs> just a fountain of information. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, I, I, I had remembered that, but I've forgotten this, of course. But uh, the history of that, 1844. Yes. That's pretty interesting. It was founded by a sea captain, and basically... Um, he wanted to keep young men off the streets from being promiscuous, and uh, and so he brought them together in a group and did Bible studies with them. So we're a Christian-based organization from mm -hmm. the get-go. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's why the C is in there, Young <laughs> Men's Christian that Association. Is, that's exactly correct. <laughs> Gee, that's hardly politically correct anymore, <laughs> though, to say anything about being Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you uh, allowed? By the by, the big Y, uh, to uh, have anything Christian involved. Oh yeah, we're encouraged to do that. Um, we are a Christian-based organization, and our mission is to help people through through programs of um, building their health and mind and spirit. And um, we do when we're when we're out in the schools. Of course, we can't, you know, teach Christianity or teach about Jesus, Bible stories, and things like that. But in our summer camps. In our schools out fun days and um, you know various things like that on our own turf then we're able to implement Bible stories during the summer camp programs and the children really really enjoy their eyes get bigger as the stories are told and Noah's Ark is a special oh, tea sure. and, you know all of that and um, but but when we can't teach Christianity we supplement our four core values, which is caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility, and we incorporate our lessons into those. Types if we of had more of those four values mm -hmm. in our world, you know, we wouldn't be in such a mel of a hess. I agree. <laughs> we would. We would probably have a hell of a lot less entitlements going on too. <laughs> you know? I think. I think that's wonderful. Well, let's get. Uh, we kind of aquatic ourselves to death here. Yeah. And there are lots of things going on. One is an art program, and we were talking, Jan, about when you kids, you and my kids, were young mm -hmm. and uh, doing art projects yeah. and the fun yes. that it was. Let's talk a little bit about the where and when and so forth on that. Well, we try to uh, do art programs, art classes throughout the year. We offer about six of those throughout the school year, maybe once a month. And children can come and register. We put those out into our catalogs, our seasonal catalogs, which there's four per year. And then during the summer, we host a, um, a couple summer camps. One is going on right now. Our instructor is Charlotte Horath. Actually, she's from Atlanta here. So ah. Uh, prior to Charlotte was Tony Newton. He was the art instructor at West Lincoln Broadwell. And and then Charlotte will teach another class in, in July uh, for four-day Monday through Thursday, 9 to 11 a.m., and that will be Step Into My Garden. So they'll be doing, you know, pictures and garden stones and, you know, drawing oh, that'll be dragonflies fun. and things like that. So. That'll be fun. Um, also, you have a day camp. For various and sundry ages, and it it goes on all summer long. Yes, for it one starts, thing and the next. It starts as soon as the um, the um, school lets out and the holiday, and then boom, we're right into camp. We launch that and um, do some training with our staff prior to that. Um, and it it does it. It goes from 6:30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, and it goes all the way up until school starts. So. About 11 and a half, 12 weeks. 6.30 in the morning? 6.30 a.m. to 6 That is before breakfast, isn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. Except when you're letting Murphy out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but those hours are good. They help parents that go to work, uh, do a little pre-care and a little post-care situation. And then the bulk of our camp activities start around 8.30 and end around 4.00. Well, that's great. Yeah. That, tell us what some of the activities would be at camp, please. Well, sure. We we try, and, and, and in the years past, we've always gone to the wreck to swim daily in the afternoons. Um, but being that the wreck is not 
having the pool right now. We soon <laughs> next soon, year you yes, can do that. We're excited well, about that and very interested open. in that. But um, for for the last summer and this summer, we're planning uh, weekly water field uh, water uh, field trips to water parks in Peoria, East Peoria, Bloomington. So the kids hop on a bus once a day or once a week, and and go up into oh probably around 9:30. Hop on the bus and and they have a little play in the park, a little lunch, and then they go into swimming. And they're usually back home at camp at around 3.30. What ages will participate in that, Jan? Sure, that's a good question. We have children entering kindergarten through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. and, that is uh, so neat. Yeah, I bet they love that. what you call a kid camp, which is kindergarten through second grade, and then a preteen camp, which is third through sixth grade. Uh -huh. And um, um, they have their own activities. They have water play days outside at the activity center. And of course, we have that beautiful new playground that Eaton helped, uh, Eaton Corporation helped us fund, and the Logan County Farm Bureau uh, Future Leaders of America helped us build that on a very, so very neat. hot day yeah. <laughs> on a hot in day. July uh -huh. uh, in 2011. Yeah. It's a beautiful playground, and we're very grateful for that. But other than that, we have a lot of activities. We, we uh, Our preteen kids go to the local library for a reading program every Monday, and um, you know, just a lot of activities inside, learning stations, play stations, all kinds of activities. Last week we had uh, Richard Semerall here from mm -hmm. the library. Yes. <coughs> and uh, he was talking about the programs that they have for kids. And it's so smart and practical mm -hmm. for you to to tie in together for yes. these kinds of yes. things. You know, it's, it's silly to go down the same furrow all the time. <laughs> yes. Here's something the old gators didn't know. I've been around a day or two, and that's, here it is, right? It didn't, didn't even, 719 Wyatt, is that the old IOF gym? Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. it is. Um, well, let's talk about that just sure. a minute. I just happened to see this in this certain robot catalog you have here. Uh, this is really, by the way, this is pretty, I don't want to make light of that, uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Somebody went to a lot of work putting this together. It's well done. Uh, I had no cognizance at all of the scope of your activities. So this is an eye-opener for the old guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk just a minute about that uh, uh, gym rental mm -hmm. at the Y. Uh, uh, that is a room that's available for people to uh, 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 rent for a party room. Yes, yes. Uh, that's they can interesting. Use, they can utilize a gym. Uh, we have a, a room off of the back side of the gym that they can set up tables for cake and ice cream, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but sometimes mm -hmm. baby showers and bridal showers are are uh, brought in as rentals. And um, I think we rented out for a little tournament not too long ago. In, um, and then we, we rented out sometimes to maybe area churches that don't have the facility or the gym that want to come in and have some activities for their own congregation but uh, and then we have classrooms down below so mm -hmm. you know they're air conditioned and they can you know host baby showers uh, you know, as a grade schooler and a high schooler first we used to play basketball out there mm -hmm. uh, just kind of intramurals type stuff or okay. kids pick up stuff kids get together and pick up teams and, mm -hmm. and that goes back a day or two but it's very interesting to note that that I did not know that that was a Y activity. Mm -hmm. uh, you have um, uh, your funding, mm -hmm. just of vital importance. Your major funding comes whence? Well, um, <clears throat> each year we have an annual Partner with Youth campaign, and we ask for donations from um, our members, from grandparents, from our staff from our board and from area businesses and agencies. And um, we usually run a campaign for about three to four months. And and it, it's all about awarding scholarships to uh, the children who maybe their their parents' income can't quite, you know, meet ends and or different hardship situations due to illnesses or hospitalizations that, you know, may just have a need for um, help with some of the program mm -hmm. fees. So, we, we scholarship off of that through the generous donate donors and uh, supporters that um, that um, um, uh, help us out with that. And uh, of course, our funding comes from fees, from programs, um, mm -hmm. grants that we could write and um, be privy to. Um, Eaton has helped us out 
very often. Eaton is very good to this yes. town. Oh my goodness. Well, speaking of funding, this station operates on funding from sponsors. And if we don't acknowledge that fact, we might not have any further funding. So uh, let's take a little bit <laughs> nod to our sponsors. <laughs> 